Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bella Gamer, and today I got a very interesting video. It's a question actually that I've just have yet to ever answer on this channel, whether it's in one of our weekly table talks or whether it's in a video, honestly. And I, I figured this is an interesting subject to talk about. Something that honestly not a lot of people actually straight up mention. Why is tabletop fun, right? So Right. Why tabletop is something that I think makes sense to people who are very deep in the hobby and also makes sense to people who are more niche, though I'm sure those people cannot really see why people who get way into it get that far. Right. Like it's the difference between someone who has a very deep backstory, very well thought out character, takes everything seriously, wants to be immersed. And someone who makes, you know, some flubber, you know, nondescript character or or legally distinct character, there we go, from some anime, whatever, and they just kind of dick around in their sessions before, you know, they they eventually just get tired of the game. And not to say that many people who play kind of silly characters of just get tired of the game and they're not really in it for the long long haul. It's more of just like if you're just getting into the hobby and you really are not that into it, you think it's fun, but it's something that you can do like once in a blue moon. I mean, yeah, why are people spending so much time dedicated to this hobby? Why am I trying to make my livelihood based on this hobby? And not only me, but why do many people do the same thing? The, why are your favorite content creators making it d d characters? And going around having fun shenanigans. Like what is actually fun about TTRPGs? And it's actually a really simple answer. It's because TTRPGs allow you to do anything. And I mean that in the most literal sense. When it comes to what your characters can do. Given the wants of the table. The GM or the players, or even the system that you're playing, you can make any kind of character do any kind of thing in any kind of setting. You want to do, you want to be a character in your favorite anime? There are tons of TTRPGs based on anime, like One Piece, Hunter x Hunter, or whatever. If you want to be a character in your favorite video game, you like Dark Souls, or you like, I don't know, Donkey Kong, you know, Donkey Kong Racing, you can do that. It's a game of infinite possibilities because it's a game of imagination. Now, obviously, every TTRPG has a set of rules. And of course, in D&D, for instance, it would be very hard to make a character with the world killing scale of someone like from the Dragon Ball Z universe. But that's the thing, right? That's only if the table wants to, you know, box themselves in like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you like playing games vanilla, that's completely cool. And and obviously it's something I mostly do myself with a few tweaks here and there to match the pace of my party. But if you just want to say, fuck it, it's fun. Let's make a skill roll or let's, let's roll some dice and just see what happens. A nat 20 lets you split a mountain. You can do that. But it's a lot more than just that. Infinite possibilities is cool and all, right? But you can technically just do this by yourselves or, you know, without a game, right? You could just tell these stories with each other. And that's the next part. TTRPGs give you a set of rules and a way to do these stories so that the ridiculous things you do are actually make sense, actually have some kind of impact and the world reacts to it. It's not just each other agreeing on what happens. There's a lot of times where it doesn't really matter what the DM wants. You're doing something by the rules. The thing happens. You fireball a room. Of, uh, you fireball an orphanage. I mean, what's the DM going to do? You know, if they just decide to cut it and be like, oh, your spell doesn't work for some reason. That's a bad DM. I mean, you shouldn't be trying to bomb orphanages anyway, you psychopath. But. The, you know, it's something that you could do in a TTRPG if, you know, everyone's generally cool with it. And that is 
the fun part of it is it has rules. A TTRPG like D&D 5e, for instance, has rules that let you do things. And so that gives everyone this kind of this kind of field to play on is a better way to put it, because the rules are kind of vague. Sometimes they're, they're not even completely written and you just got to make it up. So rather than being in a box that's very rigid, you're more like out in an open field. You've got chalk lines that indicate, you know, what's out of bounds, what's in bounds. But sometimes if you put a toe over the line, you might be like, eh, if it wasn't enough. And, you know, everything works out fine. And I think that is the semi-restrictive nature of TTRPGs is what makes the hobby fun for people. It's what makes people very interested. and with all the possibilities and with the many, many things people put into TTRPGs. I mean, it's like modding video games, actually. I mean, the number of GTA style of, of mods that let you play Homer Simpson running around, shooting people, jacking people's cars or whatever, that freedom is what you get in TTRPGs, but to an infinite level of degree. Because for the modding scene, anyway, if you want something to happen and it doesn't exist, you have to make it yourself. In TTRPGs, it similarly only the only work you have to do is be like, "Hey, can I do this?" And the GM says, "Yeah" or "No." You know, that's it. It's just you gotta find a group that lets you do the insane shit you want to do. That is tabletop. That is what makes it so fun. If this video makes you interested in tabletop, please subscribe to the channel and like the video so that other people get a chance to get hyped about TTRPGs as well. I talk about all kinds of tabletops. I rarely talk about D&D, but I will on occasion when it's relevant, mostly because I, there's just a million channels out there doing the same kind of stuff. I talk predominantly about Pathfinder 2nd Edition and Lancer because I like fantasy RPGs and Pathfinder is my favorite, and Lancer has mechs, and mechs are really cool. So, you know, if and, and beyond that, I also just talk about all TTRPGs. We have a live play that we do every week where we talk about all kinds of stuff. I, I'm sure many of you have heard this spiel before, but this video is something I want new people into the hobby to see. So if you know someone who is new to the hobby and needs someone to get the hyped up for the idea of it, share this video. Share this video, link this video, do whatever, share it on Twitter. Let people see this video because this will get people hyped. Because honestly, TTRPGs is something that many people out there, myself included, have dedicated their lives to the act of. It's like a video game with infinite possibilities. And I'm not saying it's always so neat, and I'm not saying that it's perfect or it beats video games or anything like that. I do lots of video games, obviously. I'm, it, it, it's what it is, is I can make my character. My characters become real in our stories. I get to act them out and they become real things. I think this is one of the bigger draws of TTRPGs is the fact that what you create, it becomes a thing. Like if you're in a game that gets well known or if you have an artist friend or something, you get art. Something you made gets put on paper and is designed and oftentimes looks really, really cool fits your aesthetics. It's so customizable, more customizable than almost any other kind of media or game out there. Why would you not want to try TTRPGs at least a little bit? If you've ever imagined yourself doing anything crazy, if you've ever put yourself into your favorite show or anime or whatever, whether it's something that's so just mundane and real world-esque or so fantastic, fantastical and out of this world, TTRPGs can bring you there, immerse you into it, and make you a unique individual in that world. Someone of relevance and power. Player characters in every TTRPG are world-changing beings more often than not. Even if that's not the intent of the system, oftentimes the, the GM will put you into a situation where you make a massive impact on the world around you. That's so much power that we don't get in our day in life usually. That's so much relevance that we don't have usually. It's no wonder why people get addicted to fame and just get full of themselves. 
Because through TTRPGs, you can do that. You can be someone who actually saved that world, even though it's imaginary. It's real to all your friends. And anyone who's played a really good TTRPG will tell you that it doesn't matter if it's imaginary. In that moment, in while playing that game, it's real. And the memories of what you and your friends did is real. You want to be really awesome. You want to be really cool. You can do that in TTRPGs. You could be relevant. You, you can be someone that you want to be. Like, you can take what you dislike about yourself and remove it. You can add on to yourself and just see what it would be like if you lived a different life. Or be in the shoes of another kind of character. I mean, this video could go on forever. I could talk endlessly about all the things you could do in TTRPGs because there's endless things you want to do. Check out a live play. Because live plays, while they're not the most entertaining types of content, are something that people genuinely love to watch and love to make. Even though TTRPGs have very traditionally not done well in things like YouTube, Twitch, or whatever, they're starting to become more and more relevant. And live plays, while they still don't do that well, people put a lot of time and effort into them, even though it's not their best kinds of content. I mean, obviously, these people who make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year spending a bunch of money to build these giant sets so them and their friends can just play Dungeons and Dragons together or whatever TTRPG means that people are invested in this. Why aren't you? What's stopping you? Or if you're already in the hobby, What's stopping you from going down the deep end like us, you know? Like, what's stopping you from really dedicating everything you got to it? Because I'll tell you, once you just let go, once you let yourself just get really into TTRPGs, you'll find it's very addicting because it's an experience you can't find anywhere else. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Maybe this is just a rant. I wanted to do my best version of a hype video for TTRPGs. Maybe I'll do it again later when I'm feeling better at it. Maybe I'll get more charismatic. Maybe I'll get better at this whole YouTube thing. I don't know. I just wanted to make this video for you all today to put my energy into it. To, as best as I can, demonstrate to you in a 15-minute video or less why I love TTRPGs and why I've put so much time and effort into it so that anyone ever doubts my love for the hobby, if anyone ever decides that I'm shilling for companies or whatever, this video should stand as, as a testament of someone not very big doing all this, you know, tabletop stuff, even though that's not what really sells on YouTube because I'm very addicted and I feel like a lot of people don't know why TTRPGs are addicting enough to make someone do this. So hopefully I conveyed it in this video. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.